Dameka Logai of Yahweh Leon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Our training in righteousness that the man of the Lord of a God might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or very accurately handling this very great unique infallible and inherent great word of truth Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkanu, to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk, breath by breath, in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. The great reason where our Lord of God has made. To understand, we have been made in the image of Him. Christ, our Lord of our God, teaching to us the principle, bearing the image on the impress coin, telling to Caesar, serve the things unto Caesar. If you would have explained a little bit further over there, our minute minds could have understood long back. The things what we look there very specifically teaches to us. The things unto God, pay unto God. The things unto Caesar, pay unto Caesar. He would have told for us that we have been made in the image of that great Lord of a God. And that's what he exemplified for us long back from the book of Genesis. The same thing emphasizing again in the book of Ephesians, in the book of Colossians. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, every believer ought to know that we are bearing upon us the image of the Lord of a God. And how many of them would truly know to understand about these things and live a life of truth? The image of Caesar was on the coin, so he was to receive that which was for him. And we who have been made in the image of the Lord of a God, should give unto Lord of a God that which is to Him. And that's the ultima where you and I should grow up day by day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to show forth that we are the children of that Most High of a Lord of a God on this earth. Yeah, brethren, the things which our Lord of a God has prepared and kept for us in eternity past to the praise of His glory, we shall study them. Prior to that, the confession of our sins through rebound. Without walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or marching in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to know this great mystery doctrine of the church age, which has been hidden in the past, but now been made known for us. And the, and the ultimate criteria for us in the church age is to conform to the image of His dear beloved Son, producing in us the character of that great Christ. And for that cause he has given in the church age this great bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. The permanency of the spiritual gifts from the temporary ones which have been seized. The temporary spiritual gifts which included the prophets, the apostles, the miracles, the healings, the tongues. And the things pertaining to every mannerism of which which should have been till date called as discernment of the spirits. But these things have been seized and kept apart so that right now in the church age, in the completed canon of scripture, through the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher and the work of an evangelist coming to know Christ, as John 16 was to say through love and teaches to us, and the work of the pastor teacher in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in John 16 verses 12 through 14. So the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit at one nine for evangelism, the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit through the bona fide work of the pastor teacher to reveal to us 
that we have been made in the express image of Christ our Lord our God and we need to pay back to the Lord of our God that which is due unto him for which cause he has chosen us in eternity past and furthermore we have been called in the church age the gift of helps the gift of administration the gift of hospitality and these things which have been given right now in the permanence of the spiritual gifts demands that we walk to know the mind of Christ so dear brethren as we were reading the e i can the express image of the lord of a god in the old sin nature while we are still in soil soulish man in comparison to the heavenly one so how we have to bear as we are bearing it as a burden in our flesh the old sin nature activities how we have to bear the things pertaining to the word of the lord of a god as the heavenly one in this church age so dear brethren sanctifying ourselves to learn what we have been kept today reserved in the lord's glory and we shall have a word of prayer in the privacy of our priesthood and come back and learn the truth of the word of the lord of a god as christ our lord of our god says in john 17 19 i sanctify myself likewise you sanctify this man whom you have given to me only through thy truth and lord of god demands truth even in an inward part says david in psalms 51 6 then how much more pure we need to be in the fellowship of flat god the holy spirit when our lord of god would search us diligently as he says in psalms 139 to know our hearts know our anxious thoughts and see if there is an offense within us lead us in the way of everlasting because man does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of that great lord our god so we shall have a word of prayer and come back and learn in the privacy of our priesthood by the confession of our sins through rebound and learn this e i can which christ our lord our god has made for us in eternity past infinitely divine holy father as we sanctify ourselves for the truth so that lord the truth could work in our inward parts and cleanse the garbage in our soul and produce in us the character of christ it is not just to be the doctrinal one but rather oh lord the practical one as you have said for us it is not just what we preach but what you do that we preach help us O oh lord to practically live a life according to the truth and you shall not be ashamed to call us as your sons because you have called and sanctified us through your precious blood of your dear beloved son and made us to be holy and blameless before the foundation of the world so that while we appear in your presence we shall be agnacetas for a great word to be unreproachable irreproachable so lord of our god we ask thy grace upon us as we're going to study these things to enlighten in thy word so that lord our lives could change according to thy truth because it is not for knowledge you have given thy word but to make our lives according to thy truth so father we commit everything into my into thy mighty hands sanctify this hour what we're going to study in christ name we pray father May Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us as we're going to study in these things. Amen. The things pertaining to the word of the Lord of our God as we were taking along in E.I. Khan, which is number one, an image of a man made of gold, an image of express coin. That is what we have read now about Caesar. For every believer, there is an express image of Christ being made in the image of the Lord of our God. We have been given the great things in the word of the Lord of our God to conform to the image of his dear beloved son. So this great express image which he has put for us as the life to be transformed, not just in the transformation work of metaschematizoans, only the outward appearance but the inward still being dead man bones, but metamorphomai from inward. That's the renovation of our thinking in Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3. The renovation of our thinking according to the great word of the Lord our God. That's what he demands. Truth in our inward paths. So, we have been given and resemblance or a likeness like Christ. If anyone would be called as a Christian to be, to be said, it is to be a little Christ. He is having in him the sperm of Christ. He has been demanded in him to walk like Christ. As 1 John 3, 9 and 1 John 2, 6. There is no shot so that you can walk in any other manner and say, I was not aware about that. It is purely by your ignorance you are not able to understand the word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, which have been given for us in eternity past, being completed now in the 
things pertaining to the mystery doctrine of the church age, the right value of the true believer in Christ, not to be just like the ordinary Old Testament saints, but to be extraordinary in the terms of kinekatesis, for which cause he has called us to be in the e icon, and that e icon to be in the image which is being greatly used for the express image of Lord God the Father to be conformed in us. So this e icon sometimes may be used synonymal terms with homo eomo which is nothing but the both may refer to the earthly copies and resemble of the archetypical things in the heaven however there is a distinct distinction between e icon image which always assumes a prototype that which is not merely resembles but from which it is been drawn Thus the reflection of the sun on the water is e icon, and more importantly, the child is amphusicas, possessed of a soul, e icon, the image of his parents. This word which is so much essential for us in First Corinthians fifteen fourteen and in comparison to be thought. We are bearing now in the old sin nature the image of the soil soulish one. But we have been demanded to bear, as we bear now in us the image of the soil soulish one, now we have to bear in us the image of the heaven. So as the sun could reflect in the water, the image of it, so the child has been called as having the sukikas or the things pertaining to the soul of a one of their parents in the image of their parents thus the reflection of the sun on the water is e icon likewise and more importantly the child is amsukas or possessed of a soul that is what e icon of his parents but whereas homiomo is the result of the likeness of resemblance therefore homias is the process or act of producing a likeness of resemblance however while the terms homiomo Homia and homias, there is resemblance. It by no means follows that the item under discussion is derived from which what it resembles. For example, there may be a resemblance between two men in no way related to each other. The e icon image includes and involves the resemblance of similitude, but the homias does not involve the image. The sun is a is an homion of God in that both are God, but he is also e icon in that he is the image of God, humanly indicating his relation to the Father. Therefore, the two Greek words that stand in contrast to e icon and homion, they are again character and character and apasugasme, which is brightness used only once in Hebrews 1 3, and character signifies the image impressed as corresponding with the original or pattern. On account of this idea, of close relation or resemblance it has for it the synonym called as mimie or imitation anything imitated or copy or the representation of it called as apasconias therefore on the other hand apascoma means radiation not merely reflection and furthermore hebrews 1 3 uses character not charisma because the later word was used in a narrow sense and rarely denoted the peculiar characteristics of an individual or a people and always prominently suggest the passive bearing the passive bearing of the subject spoken of karagma which occurs in Acts 17 29 which is again called meaning impression marker symbol but here dear brethren the thing which we need to look the word the reflection of the sun on the water is e icon and more importantly the m sukas possessed of a soul the e icon the image of his parents so the word which we need to learn, which calls for us, now we are being possessed of the divine spirit of the Lord of our God, and we have been called to produce in us the image of Christ. And that is what the main work, why we have been still kept alive even after salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. At the moment of salvation, when I have been granted these things, our Lord, our God, has kept you alive for a reason to know that you have been now possessed with the divine spirit because you have been born again, the human spirit, and therefore you have to produce in you the image of your parents, which is nothing but whereby you call Abba Father, says Romans chapter 8. We cry for the case of an Abba Father. Homeo, homeismos. 
those things they may resemble but in that Christ of Lord our God resembled in the essence of Christ and the things pertaining to that essence box the attributes of the Lord our God in that he was e icon because he had the express image of God the Father in him that's what Hebrews 1 3 uses the word character the same resemblance of God the Father and God the Son but here in this church age in the terms being used for e icon we have been called to be the kids of the new creation having in us the possession of the spirit having in us now something which is to be the image of lord god the father to be produced in us day by day that's what the greek word morphate used in galatians 4 19. And that word which has been so much essential for us day by day how we can get into the image of God day by day how we can make it do you think it's possible for you in any other way apart from the word of the Lord of our God do you think if you gibberishly jump along and dance along and talk along in tongues it is possible for you do you think if you go back and do and perform your miracles and healings it is possible for you or do you think you are coming weekly once to the church and it's possible for you the word which we have to learn in John chapter 17 which teaches for us all the time dear brethren because every word of the Lord of our God is so much pure and important for us to learn because for their sakes I sanctify the Greek word which has been so much used for us the strong number 37 Hagiazo, which is called to separate from profane things and dedicate to Lord of our God and the point what Christ our Lord of our God teaches for us we have to learn very specifically because the same Greek word has been used for both T saying to the point the Greek code 37 when Christ our Lord of our God himself would sanctify the same thing again he uses on the part of the believers life sanctify again 37 and not the word which could have other meanings for sanctify but he uses again the same Greek word number 37 sanctify sanctify and then furthermore he goes to prove for us how to the truth why the word 37 is so much important for us to learn because dear brethren Hagiazo demands to hollow and it has been called to sanctify that which is filthy or something that which is filthy or common and which cannot be accomplished without someone separating himself or withdrawing from the fellowship with the world. Here Christ our Lord our God uses that sanctify for him to the point to say he is getting out from the flesh. And he sanctified himself to go back in the resurrection body to the Lord of God because the way how the earth was been polluted by the rebellion of Satan. That's what we read in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 and the discussion of that in Ezekiel 31 and 32 as well. The world, particularly in Ezekiel 27, describing right from the top, from the Ionians, from the Javans of the Ionians, from the things pertaining to Shem, and the things pertaining to the descendants of Ham and the things pertaining to the descendants of Japhat spreading through the entire world all of these things where our word of the Lord God teaches for us you need to be pure from these things therefore Christ our Lord of our God sanctifies himself therefore when anyone would come and say to the Lord in that in, in that example of the parable what we look Lord of our God says except Lord God the Father there is none good he knew very well he has taken the form of the flesh being taken from the dust and the dust is a cursed one and though he was being born as a virgin birth he has in him the flesh and therefore he says I need to sanctify myself and he sanctified himself going back and taking again the resurrection body the same thing what he has prepared and kept for us though we have been sanctified in Christ and made holy and blameless before the foundation of the world he has called us to sanctify ourselves while as long we are in this flesh of this tabernacle and he is calling for the tabernacle made not with the hands but with the power of the Lord of our God the resurrection body he says for you to sanctify 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 and how is going to Hagiazo the Greek code 37 by by the aletheia the truth and what is the truth from genesis 1 1 to revelation 20 to 21 is the truth and in that revolution from genesis 1 1 to revelation 20 to 21 the entire counsel of the mind of christ to be thought in you exemplifying for you to look upon not to get into your holier than the attitude but to live a life of christ because many are happy to have a holier than the attitude many are happy to impress others that's what we find that Lord of God cannot be mocked but that they think they can mock the Lord of God by their appearance by their way of behavior by the way of talking pattern by the way of their attitude towards the government by the way of attitude towards everything what they could come to this world 
and they may be beautiful and appearance in the sight of men but in the sight of the Lord of a God you are a defaulter if you're not carrying your cross every day and coming to learn the mind of Christ you are a defaulter as a pastor teacher if you don't train them up in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit from Colossians 1 24 to 29 day by day to carry your cross and become the disciple of the word of the Lord of a God and if you do not give them the right word and make them to be perfect and complete according to the new man E I Khan, which is bearing the image of the Lord of God to be impressed. If you don't produce that character in you, then definitely what the things you're going to make on this earth is not been separated from this dust. Therefore, he asks you every day to be cleansed. Withdraw from the fellowship of this world. And he calls for you to cleanse that filthy common thing in you. Do you know what is filthy and common thing in you? Again, we have to go back and read in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17, what we have already read. This is what I witness. And I ask you not to walk like the Gentiles who walk in the vanity of their mind. That is filthy and common. What an unbeliever can do is not the Christian way of life. What an unbeliever can explain for you the mechanics is not the Christian way of life. Christian way of life is something far more superior. It is not a religion. And the way half the people are still searching for the truth. Though we have the completed kind of scripture. And though they, we have much greater information than what the other religion minds can come to put together and think they have greater information. Yet we are walking like these Gentiles, like the common people, like the filthy men. No, you're not. You are a heavenly citizen. No, you're not. You have been given the pillar of Baltimore privileges of all time in the church age. But the problem is you don't believe. You don't believe that you have been saved by faith alone in Christ alone. You don't believe that you have been indwelled by the Trinity at the moment of salvation. You don't believe that you have been sealed until the day of redemption and has been given as an utmost deposit the work of Lord God the Holy Spirit so that it is Lord God the Holy Spirit who shall expound your mind to lead and to be into all truth. You don't believe that you have to put out now your E icon of your roles in nature and put on the new man of E icon being created in the image of the Lord of a God after the mannerism of you don't know still about those things and you want to be still common you want to become filled and when Christ our Lord of a God Hagiazo he said no one is good. Do not call me good. He knew the earth is a cursed one. And he says in Revelation 14, 7, the earth, the heaven, the water, everything they have to fear and give Lord of a God that which is due glory unto him. The heavens, the earth, the land and the water. Because of the everlasting gospel which has to be preached. They have to fear God and give glory that which is due to Him. But though we have been given greater things on this earth to be pure from this earth. Though we have been born in this earth in the dust of the earth. And He demands us to be sanctified through what? Through the truth. And not understanding the scriptures in the terms pertaining to rightly dividing the word of the Lord of a God. Arthotomio. To accurately handle the word, to rightly divide the word. Thus coming and bunching up your minds with whatever it could come in your thoughts and thinking that still miracles are existing, healings are existing, teaching them some sheer acts of oratory and not able to wake up the seriousness of the calling in the life of Christ. They do not even know what is the seriousness of the condition, why they have been called in the church age, why they have been elected in the church age, why they have been demanded to walk like Christ in the church age. Therefore, he uses the word very specifically for us to say, wherewith you have been called to be cleansed from the filth, which cannot be accomplished if you are still in the filth, without separating yourself or withdrawing from the fellowship of the world. And if you don't gain first fellowship with Lord God the Father, you cannot separate your fellowship from the world. Therefore, he says for you, 
Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. Kainiketesis, all things have passed away, all things have come to new. While I have been called into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit of something new in the terms of kainiketesis, from neosanthropos to kainosanthropos, so that you can move from anthropological concept into the terms pertaining to Christological concepts. First gaining the relationship, first seeking the power of the Lord of our God so that we can let go the things of this earth. The great example will be for us in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 when the things pertaining to Moses, when he saw the unseen, the invisible Lord of our God, the visible things became temporary for him and he threw them out because of his knowledge what he reached, Helios, perfection of maturity. The problem with us is we haven't seen the perfection of maturity in our minds, though the word of the Lord of our God calls for us in 1 Corinthians 2, 6 and 7, we communicate this mystery doctrine among them who are mature, who are perfect. By default, you are perfect. You have been made perfect because of the righteousness of Christ inculcated to you, so that your mind could be set upon the things which are above, not on the things on this earth, by putting to death necrosate your all sin nature and the bearing of your burden of your all sin nature, soil, soulish life to be thrown out. Your soil, soulish life is what is a great culprit. Though we are in the terms of the soil one, the body, says 1 Corinthians 6.19, being purchased with a great price, we need to glorify the Lord of God in this flesh. Because we have been made the temple of the Lord. And how many times the word is so specific for us in the original exegesis of the word to say, Hagiazo, when Christ our Lord of God, Hagiazo, the Greek code 37, he says again the Greek code 37 for us to in praying that even we shall be Hagiazo in truth. He doesn't use the word for Hagiasmos. Hagiasmos is nothing but to be sanctification or translation or separation unto God or Hagian which is used to those who are set apart for God or he doesn't use the word Hagias which has been set apart or sanctified or consecrated but he uses the word Hagaizo H-A-G-I-A-Z-O that Hagaizo is what your total purification and separation day by day because you have established now your relationship with that great Lord God the Father through his Son because of that we have been called, we have the image of Lord God the Father in us. And what a great privilege it is for us when he prays in John 17, 19, Hagaizo. Being free from the filth of the common things of the world. Separating ourselves from the fellowship of the world. By first gaining fellowship with Lord God the Father. And therefore, the related words may be Hagiasmas, which is sanctification, Hagian, which is a sacred thing, Hagiotes, and Hagiosune, which is holiness. And we need to look very sincerely to understand that Hagiotes is to be distinguished from Hagiasmas, which is sanctification, which is active sanctification as affected by God and passed on to the character of man. Therefore, we have been called Hagiazo to be free from the filth or the commonly things of this earth. How we could be make free ourselves from the things which are having a common terms with the world. You go back and seek and search in my country, India, you will definitely find the people in their religion terms who are capable of performing better miracles and better healings than you. But you do not. But you do not know how they will perform. They will perform them in the influence of evil. But now you say you are a Christian believer, you say you are a Christian minister and you want also perform the miracles and healings but you say I am performing that in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Do you know what? After the completion of the canon of scripture, when the temporary things have been halted and seized off, it is no longer that you walk in the terms pertaining to your old sin nature in the life of demanding miracles or healings or gibberishly jumping along or dancing along in tongues but it is a life of you to walk in the passage of truth 
Those miracles or healings were been needed for them to prove that this was the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through those apostles. I don't deny the sovereign will of Lord God, the Father, in your lives. If ever you want to make some miracles or healings to you, so that you can become a believer in the Lord. And in fact, indeed, the tongues have been seized. We cannot speculate about the tongues. It is the will of Lord God the Father to heal you so that you can become now with a humble grace, greater grace, free from sickness, free from till to the point of death because many are weak and, and, and sick and till to the point of death says 1 Corinthians 11, 31 and if you would judge yourselves, it will be a great work for you to judge to the reality of the word of the Lord our God and if you would judge yourselves, you shall be free from such sicknesses by the confession of your sins through rebound. And the greatest miracle will be in your mind to convert, to repent, to change your mind in the thinking of the word and come back to the word of the Lord of our God and have the doctrine of Christ in your consciousness. That's what have faith in the Lord of our God is all about. Faith is not a therapeutic or the terms pertaining to your rheumatic therapies. Faith is nothing but the word of the Lord of God being taught clearly and accurately what happened in the past, what is the present and how we have to walk through in the future. And that's what you have been demanded. It's a great thing that you have been demanded to change and to repent and to get converted. And the greater you fail to repent and get converted into the word of the Lord of God, the greater your life will be circling along in your sicknesses, circling along in the terms of your sleepness, which is nothing but death, and it will be circling along in your terms of your weaknesses. Weakness, sickness, death. Weakness, sickness, death. But Lord of God hasn't called you for death, either for weakness or for sickness, spiritually. Anything or everything that you go against the word of the Lord of our God. There it what it begins, the sickness. And do you know why you people believe about these things? To those ministers who they teach to you. Deuteronomy chapter 18 gives a great enlightenment for us in that passage. The word which is so much important for us to understand. When we open our Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 18, Teaching from verse number 19, it goes to teach for us very specifically the importance of the truth. That the minister who is having the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church, when it shall come to pass that whatsoever you have not hearkened unto the word which I spoke through the name, through in my name, through their mouth, I will diligently require of you, darash of you, to know why you haven't heard about him. And now the condition starts in verse number 20. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name. That's what this miracles, healings, crowd, the false pastor teachers are running. The one who are arrogant enough to say, the reasons why you get along into sickness is purely because you haven't given tithe, you have done something wrong. Rather than keeping something wrong or tight, it would be a better option for you to tell since they haven't taken their cross and followed by Christ. That's the reason the weakness has begun in you, the sickness has begun in you, and death also will begin in you. The right thing, what you should tell to them. Since you haven't made up the things pertaining to the word of the Lord of God according to the demands of the word of the Lord of God and purchased the time according to the truth of the word of the Lord of God, sickness has begun in you. Weakness has begun in you. And here we use the word, the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, so that the prophet who he shall be arrogant to speak a word in the name of me. Why is arrogant? He's so confident because he says, come unto me and I will heal you. But is not able to tell to them, come and learn Bible doctrine, the word of the Lord of God alone shall heal you. If you are a believer in Christ, you are the temple of the Lord of God. You need to produce in you the character of Christ. You should produce in you the great works which Christ our Lord of God says, particularly in Colossians 3, 12, to teach, put on as the elect and the holy beloved one of the Lord of God, the things pertaining to kindness, mercy, love, joy. 
You're not asking them to come and wear these things. Which is right according to the word of the Lord of our God when you walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You are saying in return, come and purchase from me the oil. Come and purchase from me the kerchiefs. Come and purchase from me the things what I sell for you. Which is having in that the divine effect, that's what they use. And the Christendom in my country, India, particularly being so much blinded, I knew even this is all over the world. They want a temporary elevation from their suffering which they go through. They don't want a permanent solution through the word of the Lord of a God. When the word of the Lord of a God says, return unto me and learn the word of the Lord of a God. When the root takes downward, then there will be a shoot upward so that you can find the fruit on the tree. But the root taking downward is what learning Bible doctrine. But you don't want to take the root downward. You don't want to search yourself diligently in the presence of the Lord of a God. What a mannerism of a life you are living. You have faith to cure yourselves, you say, but you are working out your own death sicknesses, marching at a death beat of Satan. You are working out your own sicknesses, the sickness which is so evil. When there is no entrance of the word of the Lord of a God, then there is no hell. Can't you read Psalm 119? How great and beautiful it is in the 22 alphabets of the Hebrew being distinguished. Thy word, which is a superior ministry to teach the word in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, demanding to have the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church. If anyone would talk arrogantly, presuming that he has been sent by the Lord of a God, he is going to bear a greater punishment in the presence of the Lord of a God. And how our Lord of a God wishes in this church age, every believer should be an ambassador, every believer should be by the looking upon the time the missionary, every believer should become a great apologetic to defend his doctrine, but yet sitting in homes, men are men and women men they are thinking they are having a happy life by listening to the word they should be the workers they should be the men wherewith even though if they're not able to go out to pray for the missionaries to lead a life when they're having to be older women to become a guide for the anger women the way how they have to walk through in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and train them up but we know looking upon the time you should be the communicators of the word of the Lord of God yet you require someone to teach the basic fundamentals because your entire life has not been taught basic fundamentals correctly and accurately and don't you know the way how a lot of a God says, I am the potter and you are the clay. If I am your creator, call unto me in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because I have predestined you, says Jeremiah 33 two. The Hebrew word kun meant to say predestined. Not established, but predestined. Predestined every believer in Christ, Romans 8, to the praise of His glory and His grace. We have been predestined for the work of the Lord our God on this earth, to produce in us the character of Christ. We are not predestined on this earth to do the things that which are pleasing to the strategy and tactics of Satan. We are having an express image of Christ. And the greater if our translations would inculcate for us to understand as Caesar unto Caesar and as Lord God unto God because we have been made in the image of the Lord of a God our lives would have been changed. But we find that in the original Greek in comparison to the divine light of Lord God the Holy Spirit when we seek, search and knock his door is going to explain for us the things pertaining to your image in this earth. The image of God being created in you. And that what we seek, and that what we search, and that what we find. We find that looking upon the time being the communicators of the word, you don't love to understand the divine potter. You love to find the things which is of the clay, and you think I can mold myself in this manner. Thinking this is the way how the word says, no, not at all. The Lord of a God is not a liar, neither a man to change his words. When he said, by faith alone, in Christ alone, that's it, there ends the matter, you have been saved forever. When he says you have been made and baptized into the Holy Spirit of God at the moment of salvation itself, that's it forever. 
when he says that you are now the temple of the Lord of God, that's it forever. The unbelievers love to research upon these words and they say the temple of the Lord of God resembles to the organs of your body. And making them always to be secure without involving in the terms pertaining to the trends of this world, drunkenness, prostitution, adultery, drug addiction, dope addiction. And above all the sins of this, mental attitude sins, the sins of jealousy, the sins of vindictiveness, the sins of retaliation. In every mannerism of the sins of gossiping, maligning, backbiting. Whatever you go, not having faith in the word of the Lord of God and having a relaxed attitude in the mind of Christ, coming and judging others. And yet you think you have done the great things of the Lord. Apart from your physical abuse of your flesh, you are using by your mental abuse of your flesh and above all, by grieving and squelching Lord God, the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you are spiritually abusing the dwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and yielding unto you death. And not using effectively to the work of the Lord of God, your body. And you think you have been aged and you cannot serve the Lord. Dear brethren, Matthew 4.4 4 teaches it is written. Have you ever learned what has been written in the Bible? Are you just hearing the hearsays like a rumors? Do you know why the rumors are great rather than the facts? Because rumors don't have much time to take a deep penetration towards the truth. They don't want to inspect and look what exactly it is. Today's Christendom as well, they want to look up on the translation as rumors. And they haven't taken their personal time even to read those translations, kneeling down in the presence of the Lord of God, if ever they had that age and time, in the anger and vigor, wilderness of their life. But rather thinking, while we are old, we shall carry the yoke. But the word says, while you are young. That doesn't mean you leave off everything and come back to the work of the Lord. No, but that means for you, wherever you are, you have been called to the work of the Lord of God. Do it faithfully. Our Lord of God would know long back, if he wanted you to become the pastor teacher, he wouldn't have given you the things pertaining to your job, responsibilities on this earth. It is not that because of your cleverness, because of your greatness, you got into job. The Lord of God set apart for him those priests who shall serve him and he made them to serve him in the love of the Lord of God by dedicating their lives towards him by faithfully preparing for the work of Christ. And they will be like the Dolas, they will be like the Dasmias. The master is the Lord of God. And it is he, in spite of all or infinite circumstances, he would be making him to come and preach. Making him to come and teach. Though the people love to give him money or not, though the people love to recognize his teachings or not. It is the Lord of God who is going to make them to teach. Because their reward is great in heaven rather than the reward on this earth. What the world thinks they are capable of doing it on this earth. And that what we are finding today in our pulpits. It has become a qualification for them to go back and study in theological seminaries without having the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church. And when they come and stand in the pulpits, they do not even know to learn the importance of the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and to dig every word from proper isogogic categories and exegesis and teach to you in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the things that have been needed for us to be edified forever in the fellowship of Christ to build up His great truth on this earth. They do not even worry about that. And they said they have been made in the image of God. They said they have been given by the vision which Lord spoke to them. They say Lord came down and spoke to them. And people are happy to listen to such rumors. After the completion of the canon of scripture, Lord of God would speak through his word. And yet they say, Lord came down and he strengthened and he spoke to me. Therefore, Lord is telling to me to do such and such things for you. And if the Lord is telling for me to do such and such things, and if you go against his word, because already they have that fear in their mental attitude, Playing with the trick of their mind, the gimmicks what they developed. 
and there they would have their wife they would have the children who should say and having fear about their wife and children this man would think why i should go against the word of this minister we saying for me to do such and such things and they are quite happy to continue in that terms rather than looking upon the truth of the word rumors are raining today great in our pulpits rather than right exegesis in our pulpits and the rumors who are walking along unto the entire world like a tail bearers they are great rather than the truth of exegomai which is in a still small voice the word of truth Don't worry dear brethren we are not jealous about them neither we are worried about them we are worried only about the flock and above all we are worried about the word of the lord of our god which has to be honored above his name and the greater the time you spend not to honor his word above his name the greater you are spending your time not to know what is your real calling in christ and you have great rumors to get successful rather than looking into the depth of the word and understanding what is the truth and our this christian dumb they are developing cults boy crazy girl crazy cults dope addiction drug addiction cults in front of the stage they want to sing and dance and say to the glory of the lord behind the stage they want to go back and drink and take in fact indeed needed dope addiction and drug addiction as well and they say they are really doing the ministry of the word they say they are really meditating upon the word what a shame it is when these things are been noted by the unbelieving men in my country they would rather slip her as when we open up our mouth saying christ niche was very right show me your redeemed deeds then i will believe your redeemer how many christians they think we are reaching to the point of perfection but how many including pastor teachers they think they have the failure of their burden by not teaching the word of the lord of god every day in the pulpits and going to have a conference with the pastors and say he was been led to talk to the pastors what a man will talk to the pastors if he doesn't know the responsibility of the pastor neither if he has the bona fide gift of the pastor from the head of the department of the church just to show off that we are organizing 3 days meetings for the pastors we are organizing a meet for one day in the pastors rather than teaching the right word of the lord of god rather than learning to fear in the right word of the lord of god when this man they are not aware about the right word of the lord of god how they would go to teach can a blind lead the other blind how serious responsibility it is for us to teach every day the right word of the lord of god in our pulpits with proper isagogics categories and exegesis with the right dispensing technique of dispensations but yet the rumors being developed by this false pastor teachers called as kleptes lestes misthotes tupas canapes tiflos and shoros or intermediate pastors they are reigning a great time with the men rather than making the serious responsibility of their calling in christ how would you correct when you yourself are not right how would you correct the other blind and saying that we have such a kind of a great conference and when you yourself are not perfect how you can make others to know to go and to move in perfection and dear brethren if you have been taught by christ as the truth is in christ as ephesians 4:21 put off the old man put on the new man hagiazo to the things pertaining to the conformity of the flesh to be removed and gaining up your fellowship in the word of the lord of our god and gaining the right word of the lord of our god to be number one priority in our pulpits and it demands for us to honor his word above his name provided you have been faithfully prepared with the burden of the lord where apostle paul says in second corinthians chapter 11 verses 28 the men in my care for the church what they're teaching daily in the pulpit that's what i'm worried said apostle paul and that you daily not weekly 
the seriousness of your calling in the church age is so much important for us it is better for you not to stand in the pulpit which is not your job rather than standing in the pulpit with half as added knowledge not knowing the seriousness of your calling in the church age thinking that you are pure you are having a good believing life you are having good such and such terms and there are many great people who are able to come who are able to do better be a witnesses of the christ like a missionary by default you are an ambassador defend the doctrine of christ rather than standing in a place which is not yours if it is yours and you stand in that place then teach the word from genesis 1 1 to revelation 20 to 21 faithfully day by day word upon word line upon line precept upon precept morning one hour evening one hour every day with the word of the lord of our god which is so much essential for us every day though it may rain or shine that's what we read in proverbs 8 34 through 36 blessed are the one who wait in the presence of the lord of our god the same thing what Sammy says in Psalms 26, 11, I will bless thee in the congregation of the Lord. What is the meaning of bless Barak? Barak meant to say to kneel down in the presence of the Lord our God. How can a man bless the Lord? It is what the man will say to the other people. Bless the Lord. Let God bless you. That's what the word they use. God bless you. And the word meaning to bless what? To make them happy? No, but here in Apostle, but here, here, David says in 26, 11, to teach very specifically for us the importance of the word. And he says, I will bless the Lord in the congregation. That By that we meant to say, I will kneel down in his presence and do the works of the Lord of our God. Have you ever read the Bible fully at least once kneeling down in your entire life? If you are great enough to say yes, have you ever written once at least in your entire life, kneeling down in the presence of the Lord of our God in your translations? At least though you haven't written in the original hebrew greek and aramaic interlinear if you write every word in the hebrew greek and aramaic interlinear then you will know by the importance of it how it is that every word is not been taught in your pulpits how it is so much of information has been there for us to communicate and yet being neglected your four years of theological seminary will not qualify you to make you to be the pastor there you learn the basic necessary tools the tools to rightly divide the word your lifetime is a practice for you when you kneel down and write the word of the lord of a god following the code of the fellowship of Lord god the holy spirit of seven to seven before you could go back and and write the bible at least read the bible seven times upon your knees from there on write the bible sleeping the beer and sleeping the lion concept what we read in lamentations 3 10 in comparison to the way how david slaved them and furthermore we read in revelation 13 to teach for us the leopard face the beer and the things pertaining to lion strand and now for us, the beer is nothing but the translations, what we have read. Nail down and slave it out. Write it down every day and learn the difference. The lion is nothing but kneeling down and writing in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic interlinear. Taking every word, critical examination and learning the truth. Teaching the truth. Witnessing the truth. And then entering into the slaving of the Goliath, as David could say. And as Noah was been asked, seven flyer of the heaven, two unclean beasts, these two are unclean, the lion and the bear in our concept of writing down. And now we have to go back for the seven clean beasts, which has to be given sacrifice after the deluge. And what it was, we have found the 22 alphabets of the Hebrew, Greek, Hebrew, Hebrew alphabet, and we said not just seven times, but we shall write 22 times. What else we should be occupied on this earth if we haven't been mindful in the word of the Lord of our God? The time comes when Satan will tempt you to take to the highest point and to say to bow down to him. But the people are happy to bow down to Satan rather than to bowing down to the word of the Lord of our God. Because whenever they have been prospered, they do not know that their life has to be still kneeling down in the presence of the Lord of our God and to complete the truth. Complete the truth. Doesn't the word say for us in Proverbs, the people are perished without knowing or having proper revolution of the word of the Lord of our God. Yet these pastors are still hiding the truth. And because they do not know the truth, neither they seek and search the truth, they are just inculcating for you, weekly ones, the world of lies. And it is not just to write seven times, the seven clean beasts to give us a sacrifice, but we are asking to write 22 times, because in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, every word has to be taught. And if David could get... 200 instead of 100 foreskins, we ask the Lord of our God to make our knees to be the knees of iron, as Daniel chapter 2 image teaches for us. 
and write 44 times and not just 22 times. That will be the labor of us on this earth, kneeling down. And we have to leave behind such a great legendary impact on this earth. When you read every word, it will burn in you like a fire. That's what Jeremiah says. His word was shut in me in my bones. I said, I'll not open my mouth, but his words in me and in, in my bones was like a fire burning out to teach and to explain the truth and to make our life according to the concept of the word of the Lord our God. And the pastor teacher will not have time even to talk. Because he has his time only to be prepared. Only to teach the right word of the Lord of a God, he has the time. The match hatch dispatch, he doesn't have time. Because he knew very well every critical word has to be examined, every word of the Lord of a God being communicated as a gift for us to the sinful mankind on this earth. The first grace through Christ and the second grace through his word. Then we have to examine very critically every word. And we are representing Lord of a God in the work of pastor teacher. That is what the teacher represents, the work of Christ. And he's representing the Lord. He is the minister of the Lord. Then he has to represent him accurately. Not just to, to go and talk about a hearsay. Not just to go and talk about the things which you think you have been properly understanding the scriptures and teaching them. No. Every word in the divine fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's what he says for us in Deuteronomy 18.20, which he speaks arrogantly in the word, in the name of me, which I have not instructed him to speak. And who he shall speak in the name of Elohim, of the other ones, the word says, such man shall be put to death. But we are not doing that today in our pulpits. And do you know why those mental, mental blocks of you to have a fear to say that you have been taken by such, you haven't been baptized till the Holy Spirit of God, you have taken only the water baptism and all such fear rights? Because you fear. You fear such words rather than fearing the right word. Therefore he says in verse number 21, And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord our God hath not spoken? And the word says, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor it come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. And you know what the Lord of God has not spoken? Like Apostle Paul, they cannot say to the Lord, or in the presence of you to say that Lord of God is a witness. He says, I boast and no one can stop me about this truth because the truth is in me. And for this truth, Lord of God is my witness. Can you tell that? If he would tell that, then the first thing will be for you that to go and teach the word of the Lord of God day by day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, from the right word called as John 1.18, exegiomai. But you cannot tell that. Therefore, the point is very clear for you. When the prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord of God, if the thing follow not, nor it come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. Lord hath not spoken weekly once. Lord says, daily carry your cross and follow my disciple. Lord hath not inculcated for you to go weekly once to the church. He has said, daily renovate the standards of your thinking. Though the outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed day by day. That's a real great problem where many people are not able to realize. Because the concepts or the precepts of man, what they have developed, have become greater in number than the precepts and the concepts of the word of the Lord of God, which has to be great enough for all time. So they are happy to look and to say, Lord has spoken, so I have come to teach to you. Lord speaks through his word and he teaches to us, daily becoming his disciple by carrying his cross. In the New Testament, there is no tithes, but yet they say, Lord has spoken to give you tithes. If you don't give tithes, you will be cursed. This man, they love to deny the word. Neither they are happy to confess homologio, not for 1 John 1 9 to cite the case, but here in Matthew 10, confess the things pertaining to, to attest to the fact what it could be. What they are speaking is the same thing even in the heaven. That is what the truth is all about. Confess and attest to the fact. 
can they say when there are no tithes in the church age that they have made it as a ritual to pay the tithes the Old Testament tithe was a system of income tax but yet they want to continue today and if the pastors say to the point when there are no tithes the committee will rise and say how? how we can live upon the money of these people Though my son is not working, I have been a committee member and I need to use this money to run for interest. When there are no tithes, how can I survive? What a shame it is. In the present Christendom, dear brethren, rather than looking upon the rumors, get up and look, investigate the word, not just into the terms pertaining to translations, but from the original languages of the scriptures. If they are not able to teach to you from the original language of the scriptures, the straight and simple answer for you is to depart from such company. That's it. Cut off your fellowship with such company. Nor ought he may be a calm, relaxed one to say, I have been meditating in the Lord, I got this, I am going to tell you this, I have done this, I have done that. It would be better for him to meditate in the Lord to see whether he has the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher rather than opening up the mouth before the believers and say, weekly ones I will come. It has to be every day. Train up those people who are interested to become the daily disciples of the word. That's your job, that's your work. No man can serve two masters. If you are serving the government, you cannot serve the Lord my God. You think you are able to make up your time? And giving a reason like Apostle Paul, wherewith he worked with his own hands. Do you know what did he work? He worked day and night to teach the word. How are you doing it? And you say you are doing the work of the Lord. <laughs> Dear brethren, the great things of the word of the Lord of God which, to, which teach to us in the present Christendom no tithes you have to learn to be content with Christ that's what Apostle Paul teaches for us he was a man of content in whatever state he was been called he learned through the power of God having the faith of the Lord of God to look that the world is always a dead body we don't have anything to grow from here, neither we have anything to take from here which could be fruitful for us. But while on this earth are we witnessing the truth? While on this earth are we taking number one priority for the truth? And that's what many people fail. So he says, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor it come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet had spoken it in arrogance. And the word says very specifically, Thou shall not be afraid of him. The Hebrew word ger, which you shall call shrink away in the translation of the interlinear. But in the Hebrew it says, You shall not dwell upon the thoughts of such false pastor teachers. Because these false pastor teachers are molding your spiritual life based upon their own rationalism and empiricism, their own fear being taught by the precepts of men, but their hearts being very, very far away from the word of the Lord of God. The Hebrew word gur, which has been used in Deuteronomy 18.21, teaches, You shall not be afraid, or neither you shall shrink in your mind those false thoughts. Because Proverbs says for us, as a man thinketh, so he is. Romans 12 talks about Christianity to renovate the standards of your thinking. If you lock up your mind in the translations, if you lock up your mind in the rumors being taught by those men, if you lock up your mind and think they are still tithes and go to give continually your tithes. In the present, you may think that is correct. But Lord God being the witness for every word what we speak, when you come back home, the gracious grace of the Lord our God, what you lost on this earth by becoming a legalistical believer, Though you regret, it is like chaff to the wind. Dear brethren, the time for you to become like Christ. You have been called in the terms pertaining to kinekitesis. 
You have been called to become the new man creation to be inculcated in the Lord's will. Don't just waste up your time to looking upon lies rather than the truth in the word of the Lord of God. This life is very unique. This life is very short. Do not spend the rest of your time in vain glory. And the greater you love to spend your time in vain glory rather than looking upon the word of the Lord of God, that is purely because you have been shrinking into your mind the thoughts being spoken by dear or doctor such and such who has a great number of following men to him. That Lord spoke to him to build the church in 52 days. The Lord spoke to him saying that there will be more than one lakh people coming to the church. Don't inculcate those thoughts without proper examination in the original language of the scriptures. Wake up to your calling what you are. If the preacher is coming and teaching to you without having the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church, he is just leading his own mental energy. It is in the energy of the flesh. It is not in the energy of the divine thoughts. The divine thoughts will get transformation in you, will get great renovation in you. The divine thoughts will give you to honor Lord's word above his name. The divine thoughts will give you so that you can become like Christ. The divine thoughts will make you to have that equal privilege and equal opportunity to exercise in your life. Those divine thoughts will ask you to put to death, arise and awake and come back to look upon the Anasus case of the Kairos moments. The recovery of your breath, the recovery of your revival of a true spiritual life. And when Apostle Paul could say, Lord God is my witness, following my Christ, even we could say, Lord God is the witness for this bona fide gift what he has given to me to teach to you this word. And every word what we speak, if it doesn't resemble in the heaven, you crucify me there and there itself. And I would ask Lord God the Father to erase completely my name along with my genealogy. If ever I have spoken something wrong, which is not resembling the truth of the word of the Lord of God. The time it was foretelling, now it is foretelling. The New Testament prophets, the New Testament apostles should learn the entire Bible doctrine and come and teach to, to you the right word of the Lord of God because now the church is the university, the pastor teacher is the dean, every believer being a professor to teach the right word of the Lord of God to the people wherewith they have been called in Christ to do his will. If Moses could say, erase my name, when I would stand in the presence of the Lord of God to say, for this bona fide gift, Father, what you have given to me, and these people who haven't changed because my teachings were wrong unto them during that time then I would ask Lord erase my name at the judgment seat of Christ you know why I say this at the present time people are happy following lies people are happy following where there is no truth people are following the things pertaining to be taught by the entertaining clowns People are following weekly ones programs. People are happy following not to become the disciples of the word of the Lord of God. And if these things are not being penned in the Bible, then why they are following that? They are listening to rumors rather than the right word of the Lord of God. And now the time may be for them when we tell the truth to come and become everyday disciple of the word. They may laugh at us. But these words will stand for you grace before judgment. The grace before judgment for you. Kneeling down and preaching every day the right word of the Lord of God for you, yet you inculcate in your mind the things pertaining to your dear or doctor so and so, sure of oratory rather than the right word of the Lord of God. And the time when we stand in the presence of Christ, you will realize whether these words were been spoken by the Lord or these words were my mental energy. Don't worry, dear brethren, in the presence of the Lord of God, one day is equal to a thousand years. We shall wait when we go back home. The unbelieving men as well, the same criteria. When we say for them, the Lord of God is the only Lord. He is the way, the truth and the life. He is the only living, jealousy, consuming fire, Lord of God. Believe upon him and you shall be saved. And they say, no, we have our gods as well. Let them run. Our duty is to teach them the gospel. Our duty is to make them to understand the gospel. Our duty is to be while here on this earth to be free and blameless. Because in the presence of the Lord of God, when we stand, the time is going to come when the Lord of God would ask. Have you did your work?
Have you witnessed the truth? Have you shined like the light and salt principle to this world? In the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations, holding forth the things pertaining to the light of the word, which he calls the word of the Lord, in your hands and shining like light luminaries, have you done that? And to make you those light luminaries is the duty of the pastor teacher, so that when you stand in his presence to be perfect and complete. That's what Colossians 1, 24 to 29 is the labor of us. In comparison to Acts 24, verses 28, and the same thing in Jeremiah 3.15 we have in comparison to Ephesians 4, 11 through 18. That's our work. That's the right duty of the pastor teacher. And that and for that cause, our Lord our God daily loadeth us with his benefits. And his benefits, Romans 5, 8, though we were yet sinners, Christ our Lord our God died a substitute death for us. And 1 Timothy 1, 12 and 13, we were a persecutor, we were a blasphemer, we are having our ministry. When we could look back into the world, we are of a filth. But that Lord our God sanctified and kept apart so that we can now at least walk in the grace of the Lord our God for the praise of his glory, in his grace, in eternity past, being designed for his work. And if you don't understand about these things, Lord help you. Wake up to the right calling of the Lord. Understand your right ministry in the Lord. The damage that you're procuring in the lives of these believers by not giving them the right word, the damage you need to pay because Lord of a God through the things pertaining to Apostle Paul in the book of Acts says, I'm pure from the blood which could be upon their own head. Even in the past dispensation through Ezekiel, he says, blow your trumpet. Whether they take it or not, do your work. Whether they may be here so far be years, do your work. Blow your trumpet every day. Not playing in the pipe and harp ministry. Blow your trumpet. Show forth your trumpet ministry. That's our work. greater the world has been enjoying in the place of reality the rumors we are not worried because we are answerable to the Lord and not to you if you still think daily one hour what it is remember what our Lord of our God said couldn't you wait with me for one hour to learn the word couldn't you wait with me for one hour one hour one hour And every day when we teach for you minimum one hour, you think it's not possible for you to listen. But for the remaining things on this earth, you have time to spend according to the details of your lustful pattern, wherever it craves. And Dear brethren, the life on this earth the things what we are speaking to you at the judgment seat of Christ you will definitely find. The things pertaining to this man. We are telling to you there is only one Lord of a God. Whether you believe it or not, that is left to you. But looking upon the time, you should make the believers to be the greatest ones in the Lord's glory to teach the right word. Becoming an effective ambassador to the Lord. The area of responsibility may change. But the privilege and opportunity is the equal one for all. For the pastor teacher, it is rightly dividing the word. Evangelist doing the work of an evangelist. But by default, every believer is an ambassador. By default, every believer is being demanded in his priesthood to teach the truth. And that's what we are finding today in our pulpits. Men love lies rather than truth. No problem. We are accountable for every word what we speak. And what about others at the cost of this bona fide gift? Do not give in to them. They come and preach. They come and teach in the energy of their wisdom arrogantly. Without having proper Nagad revolution by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to teach to you the truth, to communicate the mystery doctrine, so that we can talk no longer in the terms of parables or proverbs, but we can talk in the terms of the mystery doctrine, says John 16, 25 and 33. And yet you know them, who they are. 
always the word of the Lord of God says for us where there is a right wheat being sown the tares also will be sown the children of the legal ones are less than the children of illegal ones planning their lives using the name of the Lord in the midst of this world thinking as if they are really being given the bona fide gift by their appearance but inward they are still rotten bones open specula do you know why these things dear brethren looking the practical life with their wife we can truly know what they are and that they say we are great going to foreign countries to preach where you are carrying, you are carrying not the fear of the Lord, but rather you are carrying the name of your fame. Remember the right bona fide duty of the pastor teacher to stand still at one place and teach the word, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, with proper isagogic categories and exegesis, with the terms pertaining to exegetical thought, every word, and the further meditation what you take from the original language of the scriptures, with the help of our great men, like Spira Zadiathas, Robert Bunker Time, and many other men, who have taught their life and put their life for us, so that we can carry their work upon our shoulders and lead to the next generation. We could be here to faithfully handle it, because the word says, those who are apt to teach, give them this teaching, and Lord God the Holy Spirit seemed fit for us to give this bona fide gift to speak nothing but the truth we love to strive in the presence of the Lord our God to walk in the straight gate striving for the mastery of all in nature and what a great pain it will be like Jeremiah for us every day looking upon this man who do not even read the Bible, who do not even know the Bible in the full concept of Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 to master the thoughts of the Lord, which is so plain and simple by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And at this stand in the pulpits to reign, maison cream off for them. It's better for us to be in a company where there is truth, in the image of the Lord of a God, rather than sitting in the congregation which is absolutely vain. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon your shoulders is too large. The greater the time you spend by not knowing this truth or being negligent enough not to know this truth, the greater your life will be into the terms of this earth. It's not a happy thing for us to open up our mouth to curse you or to curse those men who are doing the work of the Lord. But those nataps, it is a warning for them to wake up, the exhortation for them to put once again number one priority for the word of the Lord of God in our pulpit. Once again to teach the right word accurately. And if you don't know, go back and learn and come back and teach. And don't just be a layman to think you have been knowing all the things. Even though we study every day, we have so many things to learn new in the sight of the Lord of our God because of His Word being communicated in original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. How many great things are there for us to learn every day? Therefore, He comes every day to expound the attributes of Him in His light, says Zafnia 3.5. Every day he comes to expound. Every day, every day, every day. You know what a great privilege it is for us. Every day. Every day. And if you spend your time without knowing the right word of the Lord of God in your life, your life is filled with lies. You will be the men of most pitiable. In spite of growing in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine day by day, you're growing up in your lusts. You're growing upon someone who achieved the food and you're eating that food. But you're not growing to take your own word through the word of the Lord our God in the light of the Spirit of Christ. 
We have been said the paraclete guide has been given to enlighten us into everlasting truth and nothing but the truth. We have been demanded to sanctify ourselves as Lord God the Father Hagiazo, which have been read in the Greek code number 37 of the strong numbers. Only by truth. And how wise are those men who could understand the fear of the Lord? Because he is a consuming fire. And if you still build without being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, your spiritual life, whatever you build, it will be wood and stubble, it will be burnt off. But to be for the gold, silver, and precious stones, build up in the right word of the Lord, our God. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. In the same divine fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to hug He as ourself, we drawing from this filth of common things what the world teaches. But to have Lord of God as a witness, the things what we speak that will come to pass. And that's the only word because heaven and the earth will vanish off, but his word abides forever. So keeping those things in mind, from the beginning of the creation, again when we go back into the new heaven and the new earth, Second Peter chapter 3, verses 10 and following. If his word abides forever, then the words what we speak, through the word of the Lord of God, in the version like Sijiomai, they also abide forever. And if there is anything wrong what we have spoken, if Moses could plead that time to remove my name rather than removing these people, the doctrine what I have thought on this earth, if it is wrong, I would rather ask my Lord to recount and to pay back everything and completely erase me out of this creation in his thought what he had about me in eternity past. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to be telling to Lord God the Father that they believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple, believing Christ you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest merit is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess not the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest merit is to carry Sultan Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because of the Diamantrum of Witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one Diamantrum of Witnesses in the Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two Diamantrum of Witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and not worry besides nature, the entire Angelic Coast will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, in the same divine fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, sanctifying ourselves daily by his infallible and inerrant truth, Aletheia, having the categories of doctrine to build up exegetically. Infinite Divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have followed Spirit through the Word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and can challenge us by this message. So that Sovereign Lord, the Lord, will be glorified. In Christ, much less pure, less gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and us in these terms and challenge us for to be haggy as we day by day through the Word. In producing in us the image of you, for which cause you are called to conform to the image of your dear beloved Son. In Christ's name we ask Sovereign Lord these things. Amen.